Hi everybody. I'm just doing a I'm going to attempt to do a very short video today. I've just been out to get medicine I was out of, so that's why I'm out, period. Well that and the parents needed medicine, so you know got to got to help your family if, if you're on good terms with them but anyway uh today's topic is a gaming topic it's uh the csu i had a player ask me about should player based skills and abilities that are meant to work on non-playing characters be allowed on playing characters there's nothing in the books that I've seen or heard about that really says yes or no, but as a good rule of thumb to keep people happy and avoid potential fights, I wouldn't allow it. Because, number one, some gamers like to play genders other than they are. And, number two, if said player playing a gender other than they are or a preference of then say the target player they're targeting isn't you know a different preference than their target player is you know because sometimes a player a player w who can charm and impress you know they do it to the group once just to be like yeah I can do it but you know what to a lot of male gamers who play male characters I know a lot of them that if you charm and impress them with a female character but you're a male player buddy that's one or two strikes in their book for you so it's just easier don't let it happen make them role play it because that's that's all the interaction between players is i mean if you take out the role playing aspect of between party members then you know then why ask bob here next to you for help just roll the dice, and if you roll high enough, well, you convinced him. He doesn't get a say. You see my point? There, it, just take the dice out of it. If player leave player interaction to verbal only. Well, unless it becomes violent. Well, it, it shouldn't. Try not to even let that happen. But yeah, like like in Palladium, for example, trust and intimidate and charm and impress, I would suggest not letting players use it on other playing characters. That is my recommendation and what the CSU goes by. I mean, if I do allow it a little, then I don't even let the player know who has it. I do it secretly, and then I just add it in as GM detail. That way, then maybe no feelings are hurt. But don't let the player know that, hey, your trust and intimidate worked. Then the other player is going to be like, oh, now I'm going to get you. You know, n no. Just don't even let the player with the trust and intimidate or the charm and impress know. That's just the best way to do it. Yeah, so just if, if it's between players, trust, intimidate, charm, and impress, looks, throw them out the window. Let the players deal with the players. Okay, well, uh, my windshield is now starting to fog up. Beside, my glasses have already fogged up for when I do open my eyes. Oh, it's getting darker. I, I need to end this. Wow, five minutes already. Okay, thank you for watching. But uh, yeah, I wanted to, uh, Nick in California asked me this question. And, uh, you know, he runs a lot of mutants and mastermind 
Legends, I think it's third edition. I'm not sure, but it is Mutants and Masterminds. So, um, Nick, I wanted to do a short video and let everybody else know I'm still around. My migraines have just been kicking my butt. I did get disability, but it has yet to kick in. Thank you, Mr. Clark, for getting that. Thank you all for watching. Everyone be safe. And have a great day.